Now the next speaker is uh, Mohamsa, and he's a professor at the Division of Risk Management and Societal Safety at Lund University. You're also affiliated to Lund University Center for Risk Assessment and Management. Um, you have a, a, a very uh, broad uh, track record of actually engaging both beyond academia, also in, in the policy world. And you have done lots of work uh, and consultancy work uh, and advising organizations such as the World Bank, Asia Development Bank, UNDP, and the list is long. Uh, you are currently leading the... Um, a part of a major CEDA funded program on environmental governance uh, in natural resources. And uh, you have also been the lead uh, author and editor of the World Disasters Report in 2015. So talking about risks, predictions, that's a huge challenge. So you will here talk about migration and security in the Middle East. So the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, a, a talk like this, I have to start it with a disclaimer. I was very pleased that it's not about prediction, because as a British citizen, I stopped predicting anything after Brexit. Um, and Karen also sort of alluded to the difference between prediction forecast on the one hand, and then trends and patterns on the other, and that's what we deal with sort of in risk. Prediction is also very difficult in a context like the Middle East, which usually defies sort of any, any form of predictions because of its instability and um, complexity. What I would like to do in the next 10 minutes is just to, rather than go through statistics and facts about migration, to actually articulate a link between demography migration and security. And that's what actually defines sort of the Middle East. So the migration and displacement have long shaped the Arab region with countries simultaneously acting as points of origin, transit, and destination interchangeably throughout its history. What we're seeing recently is that the distinction between voluntary and forced migration has become very blurred as political crisis and civil conflicts sort of have proliferated. It also has multiple drivers, socioeconomic pressures, political instability, environmental degradation, and also follows very complex patterns and trends, which I will reinforce some of the points have already been, been mentioned. There is a clear link between demographic changes and migration trends, which I will elaborate now. And it's the reason why it's a no coincidence that migration is widely viewed by the national public of the host states as posing threats to their national security, which I will elaborate on in a minute. So, some of the demographic trends in the Middle East, and you will see sort of quite a lot of the paradoxes. One, population growth. Up to the mid-1960s, most countries across the Middle East have gone through a demographic transition, very high fertility rates in that region. But in recent years, this, this fertility rate began to decline due to education, economic and social progress, family planning, urbanization, and shifting patterns of migration. But that's happening almost simultaneously. There are still pockets with very high fertility rates and other pockets within the Middle East with very low fertility rates. There has also been a transition in the gender and age-specific ratios. That's very noticeable. In Syria, for example, there has been an eight-year reduction in life expectancy for men relative to only just one year for women. The reasons are obvious. A war does that. And then you have sort of the paradox of an aging population and the youth bulge at the same time. Uh, over the coming decades, the fastest growing age group is beyond 64 years of age. This will put social protection systems under a lot of pressure and might actually increase inequality as well in the lack sort of absence of policy to address these particularly sort of pension schemes and investment sort of into that. The youth bulge, which you referred to, highly educated, unemployed, and has been linked to the Arab uprising in terms of unemployment, of course. 
Health, education, and social services, the concerns in most of the Arab countries will shift from youth unemployment or have to deal with both youth unemployment and aging population and the need to invest in retirement plans. There will also be prevalence of diseases associated with old age, diabetes, cancer, heart disease, etc. They are also likely to increase dramatically in the near future, increasing sort of the public and private financial burdens on social welfare cost and further exacerbating inequality. And the last trend in, demog in demography is urbanization. Under the pressure of high population numbers, municipal services break down, the uh, quality of life suffers drastically, and the deplorable conditions in slums become sort of urban centers containing the seeds of social unrest and political turmoil, and that was also evident sort of during the Arab Spring. There are two main causes to migration in the Middle East. One is economic growth and economic opportunities, and that's the pull factors, and that's out there, the Gulf states. And then there is regional conflicts, which is the push sort of out sort of factors. The Middle East is the region with the fastest growing international migrant and forcibly displaced population. 7.1 million in Syria, 4.7 million in Iraq, 2.9 in Jordan, 2.8 in Yemen, and 2.8 in Turkey. And these are the 2015 figures. Uh, there's evidence that such migration erodes the economies and social fabric, security and administrative capacities of most of the countries in a volatile region. So, demography, migration, let's bring that into what has it got to do with security. In security and in security studies, it's always security interdependency. Security doesn't work in silos. It's not political security, economic security, military security. These interdependencies operate across sectors. The example is, is the water resources, for example. So water is an environmental security, but it can spill over into becoming a military security or an economic security. In terms of military security and with the large number of displaced population, migration can undermine security in four ways. One, migrants use the territory of the receiving state for initiating military activities against their home country. Two, refugees may convince the receiving state to undertake direct actions against their home country. Three, receiving states may have an interest in challenging the regime of the migrant's home country and uses them as a means to this end. And fourth, migrants may threaten the military security of their home country by providing financial and military assistance of rebel groups. Superimpose these on any conflict in the Middle East and you'll see that the four of them actually apply and it's very evident in Syria. Political security is related to population increases which may further reduce the ability of Middle Eastern governments to provide social services and economic opportunities for their citizens. The regional stability, on the other hand, is threatened by patterns of transnational crime, such as smuggling and human trafficking, especially when women and children are involved. Societal security has a lot to do with the ethnic balance, Lebanon and Iraq, for example, which have to address ethnic and religious questions, and the population trends may exacerbate domestic conflicts and societal insecurity. The population growth or through migration may favor a particular unwanted ethnic and religious community, Shia versus Sunni, for example, whether it's sort of homegrown or through migration. And it's actually the reason why the Lebanese and the Iraqi governments are not interested in providing statistics about population composition, right? Yeah. The uh, demographic changes in the Middle East will have an impact on economic security. Some of the most intense pressures on labor markets observed anywhere in the world in the post-Second World War period is in the Middle East according to the World Bank. Poverty, uneven distribution of wealth, lack of access to basic human needs are prime causes of domestic conflicts, especially when relatively poor people see others living much better. That's where sort of the seeds of discontent, sort of an instability come from. The environmental security, finally, the effects of population growth on economic development and uh, as sort of Lena mentioned, 
often leads to excessive pressures on uh, natural resources, rapid deforestation, desertification, soil erosion, as Karen mentioned, are most acute in the Middle East. Almost every large city in the Middle East has water supply problems, and some of them have already run out of water, sort of completely. You only need to think about the Euphrates and the Nile Basin. And these are very critical and flashpoints, sort of volatile sort of points, particularly the Nile with the ongoing dispute with Ethiopia around the, Ren the Renaissance Dam. So to conclude, security interdependence makes the management of security threats not only challenging, but politically imperative. If it's not managed, prediction is very difficult of the outcome of these complex processes. So addressing the impact of current population patterns, so the answer really and the opportunity is in population patterns, not sort of tinkering around the edges in the Middle East community, societies and states, and as well as managing regional and transnational patterns of conflict and migration in that region is highly imperative to avert, prevent, not predict, but sort of prevent that kind of security threats that are highly to, I would say, sort of predict the tipping point of it, rather than whether it's actually going to happen or not. Thank you. Thank you.